So thank you to Anne for having me. My presentation is about well data management plans, of course, uh, and how we try to get the researchers as they gather at the waterholes. My name, there we go. Uh, I'm Matthias Lippis. Um, my title is Coordinator Research Services, but I like to call myself a data librarian. If you need to tweet, call, or email me, there are my details. Now, um, I always forget to put in a slide introducing Curtin University itself because I assume everybody knows of us. Um, Curtin University is the largest university in Western Australia. We're a member of the Australian Technology Network. Uh, our research profile is growing, um, I think is the best way to put it. So traditionally not a very strong research focus, but we are absolutely growing our capability in that area at the moment quite rapidly. So I don't like using the analogy of carrots and sticks anymore. Um, I prefer to talk about water holes after a conversation with Jens Klump at CSIRO. Carrots and sticks, well, they, of course, carrots are good things, sticks are bad things. But really, when it comes to research administration and research management, most things are a combination of good and bad, depending on what point of view um, you take. So we like to put some things in place so that when researchers congregate at the waterhole to get something that they need, um, that's where we approach them and involve them in data management planning, for example. So uh, data management planning is just one of the larger, one of many services available at Curtin University. Um, we have training, which is delivered by the library. There are monthly data management seminars, and I just finished a month of very intensive seminars. I delivered about eight over the course of three weeks. We have a library guide on research data management. There is the data management planning tool, uh, storage for data, uh, the R drive, and um, a facility for publishing data, uh, including DOI minting. And of course, we also provide advice to researchers on uh, all sorts of things around data management, like ethics, IP, grant applications, so on and so forth. Now, I'd like to quickly talk about what a researcher actually is. From <laughs> Depending on who you talk to in the university, they, they're mostly concerned with just one kind of researcher, staff or students. I like to think about all researchers. It doesn't matter where they are, how early they are, or how late they are in their career. Um, I especially like to get them while they're young, um, train up early career researchers in good data management practices. Now, the, the services that we have developed at the university were very uh, developed under a very, very strong collaboration between the library, the IT department, the Office of Research Development and the Records and Information Management um, team. So we all came together providing our own expertise in particular areas, but it wasn't as though just the library was developing these things in a silo. We, it was certainly a strong collaboration. Now, onto the actual data management planning tool. Um, I am going to, uh, yeah, I, I tend to be quite sceptical of technology working during presentations like this, so I've elected not to give you an in-depth demonstration of our data management planning tool. Um, if you'd like to see it down the line, please get in touch with me and I'll happily organise a screen sharing session or something and walk you through it. So our data management planning tool was developed in-house by our IT department. Uh, development started quite a long time ago, probably about four or five years ago, um, but there was a lengthy hiatus in between. And then eventually they picked it up, polished off what was needed, and made it available. So it would have been first available almost two years ago to the month, in fact. Now. At the moment, the data management planning tool is based around a series of pages. There are three pages with open-ended questions with text boxes that researchers can answer. Now, these questions are things like, what does your data cover? Who does it belong to? Who's going to be accessing the data? How is that data going to be safeguarded from human or machine error? So on and so forth. We have deliberately chosen to not moderate them or mark them or put them through an approval process, although there is a, an exception, of course there is, because you'll see shortly we, we have a huge number of data management plans and it would be an incredible workload for somebody to actually have to mark them and provide feedback as they come through. 
Now the first uh, point, the first waterhole um, that we went to to uh, in embed the data management planning process was to get access to the R drive. So the R drive and the data management planning tool were introduced at the same time and you must create a data management plan in order to apply for a folder on the R drive. Since its inception two years ago, we have been performing regular updates roughly yearly to the data management planning tool. We're currently in the process of planning the next phase of enhancements and they are mostly to do with upcoming integration with uh, an ethics management module that we are also implementing. So the, uh, the R drive, so that, that water hole, um, it is a very plain and simple network drive. There's no fancy ways of accessing it, but the, um, it is effectively unlimited to researchers. They can ask for as much storage as they need, although we might raise an eyebrow if they need more than five terabytes of storage and have a conversation to see if there's another way to provide them with what they need. They don't need to pay a cent to access this storage and the storage access controls are on this per person basis. So you can say, I'm collaborating with this researcher from another department. We both need access, but nobody else. Uh, that's a relatively novel thing for our network drives at Curtin University, which are traditionally mostly based around organizational units. Uh, students cannot apply for storage by themselves. They must apply, uh, sorry, the supervisor must apply on their behalf. I mentioned R drive because it was very tightly coupled with the data management plan and of course we we like to think researchers are very interested in having free sort of unlimited storage for their research. I think that's a good way to get them to think about data management planning. So I did mention that we started all of this, the, the um, implementation of things quite some time ago. So in April uh, 2014 was when we introduced a new research data on primary materials policy and September that year was a soft launch of the planning tool and the R drive. Um, there was an even softer launch in April but that was more of a prototype to do some usability testing with early adopters. And then we progressively found more watering holes to introduce data management planning tool. To. So in January 2015, we introduced stricter research data management for human research ethics. In August, we then added it to higher degree by research students. In September, we hit 1,000 data management plans, which was a pretty exciting time. Uh, then in January this year, uh, it was introduced for animal research ethics. And just the other day, I discovered that some honours and fourth year undergraduate student coordinators were planning to um, introduce stricter research data management for some of their students. Uh, I checked this morning and we have, we're pushing 2,000 data management plans. I think it'll take us about a month to get to that magic number. And then coming up soon, uh, we are implementing um, a human research ethics management module um, component of InfoEd, and that is necessitating some of the changes to our data management planning tool. So, uh, stricter research data management is um, a few things combined together. So first up, we have that creation and maintenance of a data management plan. And that is primarily what I would say is responsible for the huge number of plans that we have received. The, we also want researchers to deposit a copy of their data on suitable institutional storage, which might be the R drive, but it could also be one of our other network drives at the university. And we also don't want sensitive data to be stored on personal devices at all, ever. I mean, that, that was always the case, but we've been really highlighting that much more strongly recently. So you might have seen that we revised our data management policy after only a year of it being in place. Um, and the reason why we did that was because we had this lovely policy that was based on very little experience of actually doing it. We got a, um, we looked at policies from other universities and organizations and put our own together. But then we discovered that when the rubber hit the road that it was lacking in a few places. So we added some much stronger links to the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research. We added a new reference to sensitive data within the policy and we also had stronger references well, typo, to data sharing and publication. This is um, the, uh, a pretty chart of um, the data management plans over time. Now, it is over two years and you can see we've experienced massive growth. 
Now, I can't point out things on my screen to you, I'm used to giving presentations in person, but you can see there that in uh, from August to September, when the data management planning tool was made properly public avail publicly available, there was a, a small spike there in growth. But really, it was January 2015 when it was uh, data management planning was made mandatory for ethics, human research ethics approvals, that it shot, started shooting up in August 2015 was the introduction for higher degree by research students and another spike again. And it's still too early to see if there's been much of a, an impact by the introduction for animal research ethics, but we'll see how we go. Um, we're still experiencing a huge number of new plans every month, and so I think last month we had about 150 new plans. So, data management planning, which I haven't necessarily spoken too much about itself, but what I feel is important is how we've embedded it in different processes um, in the research life cycle. So, you need access to storage, we'd like a data management plan. You need ethics approval, please provide a DMP. And finally, if you want to be a higher degree by research student at Curtin, you need to write a data management plan. So, what's next? Well. We've got 2,000, almost 2,000 data management plans, which in and of itself is an excellent data set that is begging to be analysed, so that's on my list of things to do. And also, to support the introductions of all these mandates, more training, more training, more training for researchers. So, thank you very much. Um, that's it for my presentation.